Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richardson. Ms. JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. I hope everyone is loving today. The sun is shining bright, no rain. Yeah, we're going to have a good day. Well, today I want to talk about, um, I saw in the Charlotte Observer, they, um, the government did give North Carolina the, the okay to give more funding for mental health. Now, for those who follow me, they know that I went down to to the council and asked, uh, you know, what's going on about the mental health in our city. Um, I've been dealing with people at the schools. I've been dealing with the city itself out and about, you know, and this is just the beginning. Um, I was supposed to have a good party intro meeting this morning. They never came on Zoom. So I said to myself, well, well, what is he trying to tell me? You know, everything is done for a reason. Um, I already know what to do to run a campaign. I don't know why um, I even accepted that meeting to um, start a campaign or learn how to do a campaign. I just wanted to hear the, the facts of, you know, what you need to do. So with that being said, um, for those that don't know me, my name is Jacqueline Richardson. I'm 52 years old. I'll be 53 next month. Um, I have three children, one grandchild, and two, and three great-grandchildren. Um, I've been working in the communities for over 30 years, um, from New York City to Buffalo, New York, Maryland, and all the way down here to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, people wonder how I get in the communities and be able to communicate with the children the way I do. It's because I understand a lot of the things that um, they go through. One, because I was going through it myself as a, as a youth, and life became very hard for me. However, I overcame that um, with, with the grace of God, you know, and knowing God. And I teach these kids every day, you know, um, pray. If you want to learn about God, I, I'll come, I'll teach you. You know, um, what you got to do is read the Bible and ask for understanding. My goal. Uh, For the youth, for all those that don't know, I own a nonprofit. It's called Private Friend Incorporated. The reason why I named uh, uh, my nonprofit Private Friend Incorporated was because I'm their private friend. You know, they're able to come to me, talk to me, get help when they need it, um, guidance when they need it, and even food, clothing, or funding when they need it, you know, if I have it. So it plays a big part when someone has that one person that they could depend on, you know. Um, and I, the reason why I say this is because when I was a child, um, I went through a, a, a bad situation, traumatic situation, and um, no one believed me. Okay, no one believed me. You know, my brother was being molested and raped, and I was being abused. And almost raped, but my grandmother walked in. God bless her soul. Um, y'all can read that story in um, Wounded, Survive, and Thrive. Um, it's written by Millie McGee Morris, and I think you can get that on Amazon. However, um, no one believed me. I had no one to, to um, open that door for help. Okay, It was one person that believed me, Okay, and it was my mother's friend. You know, and I thought I found her recently because my cousin just died and um, his wife lives in Harlem. And this woman that helped us lived in Harlem. Her name was Kat. And um, she was talking to a cat and I thought it was her. And I'm like, you know, is that her? Is that her? Because I want to I want to hug her. You know, I want to thank her. Well, what Kat did for me was. When I came to her, when my brother was um, bleeding out of his rectum, and not only bleeding, the food that was going down his mouth that I was feeding him was coming out a hole through his rectum. That means his intestines no longer worked. Okay, but me being a child, I didn't know. Um, the man raped my brother and busted his intestines can't live without an intestine. Um, So the result of that, my brother died. Okay. Um, But Kat took us to the doctor. She was the one that said, I don't care. 
I'm taking y'all. Where's your doctor, Jackie? And I told her, I said, it's in the Bronx. We just have to take the bus over there. And she took us there. But when she took us there, being that she wasn't my mom or a family member, they immediately called my mother, which took us right back into <laughs> the trauma that we was already in when we was trying to get out of it. Okay? <clears throat> so, I say that to say... That we that shows us that the governments and the doctors are not the ones that help us. Okay, it's the people in our community. Because what did the doctor do? Put me and my brother right back in that situation. As I've grown and had to deal with this traumatic, you know, um, issue in my life, I've touched base with a lot of people that cared, you know, um, they was there for me, you know, after, but it was after my brother died. Nobody was there before he died. And that's my problem. Okay. They always want to fight for the ones that's dead already. What about the ones that's living? The traumatic things that they go through. Traumatic things that not only the youth go through, the elderly, the mental ill, our veterans that um, go and fight wars for us. And when they leave the service, they come back on the streets amongst us. The traumas that kids go through every day with not having a two-parent household. The traumas of the a parent having to pay bills alone and no one to help. But yet and still the government says, hey, we're here to help you. But they take 30, 40, 60 days to give a family help. This is just the beginning. I was contemplating on whether or not I wanted to run for Congress, mayor, but I think I'm going to stop with the mayor for right now so I can learn a little bit more about the politicians, um, what their thoughts are, why these people are out here suffering. And see, I've physically been through it right along with you guys. I come into communities and people stop and talk. This is crazy. I was <laughs> at a uh, Novant Cancer Institute the other day. And I met an old man. And I was trying to go in the building and use the bathroom. And um, he was trying to let me in first. And I said, well, the proper way, you know, uh, you always let the people that's been serviced out the building and then the new ones come in. So I was trying to let them out the building. Plus, he had his wife. She had um, she was in a wheelchair, so I wanted to hold the door so he could come on out. And he made the statement, <laughs> and I had to laugh. He said, you better hurry up and get in there because you know they're going to try to charge you if you five minutes late. So come on and get in there, or you're going to miss your appointment. So get in the building. And I cracked up. The white old guy. But I knew exactly what he was saying because I've been there. I pulled up at, at uh, appointments because I didn't know it was going to be an accident. And I'm 15, 20 minutes late. Now you want to charge me $25. Well, it was an accident. Do I got to get out and get the information from the officer to prove that I, I was in traffic in an accident before you charging me $25 or canceling my appointment? So these are the things that's going on in our community. And I watch this, you know, and we say to ourselves, like, well, what is the mayor doing? Now, these people, I'm not saying that this person that whoever is the mayor, Charlotte. Um, I'm not going to say they're not doing their job, but they don't know their job firsthand. OK, like I do. Because I'm out here in these communities with these kids, with these elderly, with the veterans every day, every single day. And they tell me their problems. They tell me what's going on with them. 
And some of them make it their business. I'll never forget where I was doing Instacart. And I've had people go on their break in a supermarket because they were being mistreated. And would come outside and talk to me. You know, when you see stuff like that in the community, be people crying out for help. Something is wrong. And it's not them. It's the way the state, the, the city is being ran. So I say that to say, um, yeah, I think I want to go ahead and run for mayor. You know, I think the the guy contacted me just to get me on board. Like, yeah, now we need you now. You know, I, I went down to the council and, and told them what I felt our city needed. They evaluated and they did it pretty fast. So, you know, shout out to you guys um, for uh, taking into consideration what should have been done a long time ago, but it's done now. And we got to get ready for the new generation and make sure that they have the mental help that's needed in our city. Now, I need you guys' help. I got one thing done, and that's without being a mayor. Just imagine how much more I can get done if I'm the mayor of Charlotte. So I'm going to ask y'all, you know, um, to help me build a campaign, okay? Because I need the the little things that stick in the grass with my name on it, (laughs) okay? So people will know who to vote for. Uh, But first step is I need the 800 signatures, and I'm going to need that before July. So that's less than six weeks, okay? I believe so. I think the date is July 21st, but I got to get the the signatures together and submit it. Okay. Um, And I need 800 of those. Now, mind (laughs) y'all, I don't have the time. Okay. So if you are a stay at home mom or um, a person that has Income coming in, see, I have to work, okay? So I don't have time (laughs) to run around the city and ask for signatures. And that's just the the truth of it all, okay? This is why I had uh, pushed this campaign thing behind me. You know, I've been, uh, I do music, guys. Um, I've been trying to sell my copyrights uh, so I can, you know, Sit at home and get these things done, okay? Um, When you're trying to worry about how you're going to eat tomorrow, you really don't have time to be worrying about a whole city. You you can only worry about yourself, you know, and the child that God appointed to you. However, I'm asking for y'all help, okay? I'm asking y'all to help me get those signatures, okay? Um, I will try. I know it won't be this week because I got a lot of things that I'm trying to do this week, to help me get income um, and be able to f- survive so I can even stay in Charlotte because I don't really have family like that here in Charlotte. I do have family member, but they're not set for me to uh, live with them, okay? So if I have to uh, relocate, it will be ha- it's going to be out of Charlotte. So it will be null and void is what I'm trying to tell y'all. I wouldn't be able to run for mayor. I wouldn't be able to help y'all. I will be gone. Okay, and that's just the truth of it all. Okay, um, y'all know what campaigns exist of? Funding. Okay, you can always go to my website, um, and Private Friend Incorporated. That's privatefriendinc.com and um, donate. Okay, y'all know what these, um, Political officials do, <laughs> okay? It doesn't stop. Uh, only the new ones, the youth, don't know. But you older guys, y'all know, okay? So y'all know what y'all got to do. If y'all want me to, to take stand for this city, okay? The way I took stand to help y'all with the men- mental health, y'all got to donate so I can put together a campaign, okay? Meaning I got the, the, I need the stands for the grass. I need pamphlets with my name, what I'm fighting for in my city. All that stuff costs money and I can barely live myself 
I'm fighting every day to survive, just like y'all. Okay? So this is the only way it can be done. Um, I will try to set up something online uh, where I can collect signatures and send it out to people in Charlotte. Um, so I can get that started and maybe y'all can follow through while helping get those signatures on there. Um, and that's pretty much all I can do. Um, I do want to help you guys. I see a lot out here that can be changed. And like I said, it, we just getting started because Charlotte is way behind on a whole lot. Okay. And some of the things that go on in this city shouldn't even go on. And I'm talking uh, court-wise. I'm talking um, social services. I'm talking employment. So many things that's been going on in this city that is just pure wrong. And they're letting them get away with it. And that's something I'm not going to do. Okay? It will end the moment that I take uh, office in this city. Okay? Um, because I'm going to fight to the bitter end. So I just need you guys to help me with that. All y'all stand and continue to fight for your lives. Okay. Because the city is just not, um, it's not set up to be the big city that they want it to be. Okay. They want to be like a uh, small New York. I get it. You bring the money into the city, but you can't bring money into the city if your city is not equipped to help these people the proper way. People don't want to move to a city where there's a bunch of rigmarole and if their lives fall, the day they're going to fall apart. Where well, we're going to start seeing more suicides, more people killing. No, that's not how a city is supposed to be ran. So we got to get to the bottom of that. We got to get to the bottom of, of uh, our youth uh, getting the mental help that they need from, ch from being a child. OK. Because of the traumatic issues that they may have came across and don't know how to deal with life. Learning coping skills, even if they don't have a mental health issues. Because if you don't have coping skills, it leads you to mental health. OK, so these are the things that we're fighting for in the city of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County. You know, it's crazy. I was saying, oh. I'm going to feel bad, you know, because I, I be all over everywhere in all these counties. And I talk to all the people, you know. Um, am I ready to rule a whole state? I don't think so. I just want to start in a state first. And then maybe I'll run for governor later. Because that's the only way I'm going to be able to help all of the whole state. But for right now... Let me just take on just the, the Mecklenburg County, you know, even though I come out to Cabarrus, I come out to, um, oh, Jesus, Union County. Um, I be out in, um, I forget where, Gastonia and Kings Mountain, all of the counties out there. I be all out there, too. I be everywhere. You know, but it's all different counties. So I don't know if they have their own mayors or, you know, I don't know how it works. But I need to focus on Mecklenburg County and what's going on in our city right here. And once I I can figure it out and, and we get it right, then I could branch out and maybe take on Cooper's job. You know, and then he won't ever have to worry about hearing from me again because I will be in his position or take on assistant governor because that's what I initially had wanted to do, become assistant governor but I haven't had a chance to touch base in any of the other cities. Like, I haven't been to Raleigh. Um, I, I have been to Greensboro so I do know a little bit about Greensboro. Um, but there's a lot of places I need to touch down in North Carolina in order for me to fight for these people because every city needs something different. Every area needs something different. So I got to get in the communities and talk to those people just like I did here. So that's going to take a while. So I think taking on the mayor spot would be a little bit um, more my speed for right now. 
You know, they say crawl before you walk, you know? So that's what I want to do because I don't want to fail you guys, you know? That's not my my, my um, motive. My motive is to get in and get the job done and not fail you guys. I don't want to get up in the office and then forget about what was going on down here because now they want to talk about the whole state. But what about what was going on in each city? So I need to take on that first. And then I can climb the ladder. So if you guys, you know, agree with me, I will get the um, petition done and I'm submitted on social media. I'll be sending it out to you guys. I'll be hashtagging you guys. Help me get these numbers because we got less than about six weeks, six to seven weeks. So I can be on that ballot. This is Jacqueline Richardson. It's JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. We got to continue to pray for our city. I'll talk to y'all soon.